Hello and welcome to Off the Beaten Pot, bringing great food back to the great outdoors. My name is Tom, and today um, it's a video I probably should have done years ago. It's um, how to get started cooking in the great outdoors. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm here to help you uh, improve or start your cooking game in the gate in the gate, in the great outdoors. So I'm gonna to talk to you about a few things that I would do if I'd never ever cooked in the great outdoors. Um, and when I say cooked, I mean I've not tore open a packet, filled it with hot water and waited, or emptied that packet, heated it up, or eaten that packet cold. I'm talking about taking ingredients into the great outdoors. Um, I've cooked, um, I've cooked IKEA style meatballs, I've cooked a roast beef, I've cooked scrambled eggs, I've cooked dal, Fish pie, cottage pie, loads of stuff. Really nice stuff. If you see my video of me cooking a roast beef and think, well, I'm never gonna reach that, there are stages to get there. So with like everything, to get to the top of the mountain, we have to start at the bottom. So let's look at some of the things that I would consider doing if I wanted to improve my cooking in the great outdoors. One, choose a recipe you know and enjoy, and it doesn't have to be fancy. Even if you're going camping for five days and you just want to try one meal on your own, that's fine. You can even take a backup. So let's say you've got five days worth of single-use plastic tear-open packet pouches. I'm not here to crap on them today, but that might be where you're starting, and that's fine. So you've got all of the food for your trip that you want to cook once. What do you like to eat? For example, one thing that I can cook really well at home is scrambled eggs. Uh, to me, that is simple. I could do that pretty much half asleep. So I'll take scrambled eggs out onto the trail and that'll be the one meal I cook. And then that would just give me confidence. So once I know I can do it, I prove the concept for the next time I can start thinking what I'd do, even if it's just adding to the scrambled eggs, even if it's just adding a nice, um, bit of toast, and then scrambled eggs. You've improved it, or you're adding chorizo. You've improved it, and you can practice this at home before you go out, you can practice the recipe in your normal kitchen pan, and then apply what you've learned to your stove, or you can practice on your stove at home. Even a bacon sandwich, or a fake bacon sandwich, whatever you like, just, just get heat on your cook set, cook something, put it in bread. It still counts. It's still building your confidence, improving that concept. Second thing is uh, subscribe to this channel because you'll get insights and the algorithm will eventually pick up and it will also point you in directions of other people out there um, who can help you. Another thing you can do is cook a recipe at home and reheat. So uh, Trev from Summit or Nothing, he does this a fair bit and he makes an incredibly tasty stew, but he makes that all at home. He makes a big batch, so he feeds the family, bonus, then he keeps some aside from himself, puts it in a Ziploc bag, and you can get reusable Ziploc bags, which is an extra bonus, and he takes that out with him, and then he just, he just reheats that. And that is amazing. So he can reheat that. You can even dehydrate it. If you've got access to a dehydrator, or you can find a channel on how to use your oven as a dehydrator, probably not recommended in a cost of living crisis because it can be quite energy intensive to use your oven to dehydrate a meal, but if you've got access to a dehydrator, you can even dehydrate it. But anyway, cook it at home, cook a stew, cook, you can follow a recipe. You can, if you go wrong, you've gone wrong at home, your calorie intake while outdoors doesn't depend on it. If you get it right and you think it's amazing, then you can freeze it until you're ready to go out. You just um, gotta make sure you cook it safely. And I've got a video on some safety tips on how to cook, which you can look at here or here or here. Another one, um, if you're really, if you don't even have um, a camp stove, then buy a cheap one. Not a sh one, but a cheap one. So what do I mean by not a sh one? Don't buy this one. Buy the MSR Pocket Rocket from eBay second hand. Or buy a Coleman's one um, second hand. Or buy a Van Gogh one second hand. Anything that was great 10 years ago, brand new, is going to be good enough for you now. So you can buy a cheap second-hand market. I'm a really big advocate for most of the things behind me that I take are second-hand or hand-me-downs. Um, so buy it second-hand, learn how to use it at home, get confident with it, 
and you've not wasted all of your money. And on the second hand market, if you don't like what you're doing, you can always resell it and lose very little of that value, if any. Watch YouTube videos. So of course I've said subscribe to this channel and I was kind of joking, but I wasn't really, so subscribe. But there are loads of YouTube videos out there on not only how to cook outdoors, some people do these videos without even meaning to. Um, like They'll just be showing their day out on the hill and they'll show you what they cook and how they cook it. And without realizing it, they've given you an instructional video on how to cook that meal outdoors. But also proper cookery videos. There's really simple one pot recipes, loads of people, loads of recipe channels on YouTube. So just type in what you want. Like don't, don't let uh, your aspiration be stifled. If you want to make a roast beef, find out how to cook a roast beef and then find out how, or have a think about how you can apply that on the trail. There's loads of different ways, so just aim high, choose what you want to eat. So let's say you're going out there and you're excited to try cooking for the first time, but you bought this because you didn't listen, or it's just what you had and that's fine, and you think, brilliant, but that doesn't work. So actually, you're stuck there with a paperweight, <laughs> because everyone has a paperweight outdoors. Always take more than one way of starting a fire. So it's great when these companies give a pencil lighter on them, but that can fail, and often does fail. Not often fails, but there will be a point in your stove's life where that will be the thing to go most likely. So, take out more than one type fire lighter. So I have a ferro rod here, so you can strike that to get the spark to light the fire so you can get cooking. I also have waterproof matches. I don't take this out because I don't need that many. I've just got a strike pad and I've got five matches in a waterproof pack that I take in my backpack. Um, and a lighter. Most people have access to a lighter, but matches and ferro rod as well. And then again, with a lighter you're still um, expecting you're still relying on mechanic mechanics. You still have a dependability on a mechanical interaction. So yeah, take more than one way of starting the plane. And go slow, don't rush it. Just, yeah. Um, I often say in my videos, it's easy to make things wetter than it is to make them drier. So if you've got a lot of water, add it slowly, etc. Basically, all of the tips for actually cooking you can find in my videos and in general. So another good thing, and this is really just to help you with the confidence, is to take an emergency meal pouch. If you have to go and buy one, uh, to take that emergency meal pouch, if you mess up a meal and you're not happy to eat it, then you've got the option of just tearing open that pouch and still eating. Or tearing open that Tupperware or that resealable Ziploc bag and having something. And have that as a spare. And sometimes you might be in a condition where you just can't. You can't physically cook for some reason. So having that spare pouch is gonna, it's gonna help. So lastly, take snacks. Snacks are important. So important, I'm planning video on just snacks alone. Um, chocolate, your favorite things, yeah, your mood boosters. Um, take snacks and if all else fails, you've got loads of snacks so you can keep up that calorie intake. If you've got any questions, if you think there's something I definitely didn't answer and you're on the edge of going out and cooking outdoors for the first time, ask it in the comments below and I will answer. So please do that if you've got any questions. I'm Tom, this is Off the Beaten Pot. Nice to be back. Cheers and God.